Yesterday I published this circuit on YouTube from a VFO and I now made the VFO in a more definite way on the breadboard, the ideal breadboard and here is that circuit. You see exactly the same as I've earlier published but now on a definite way and you can also see that the oscillator is shielded. And that was done by a thin iron from beer cans. The shielding is necessary and you can here see a, a, a fat copper wiring that goes through the breadboard to the underside and is soldered there so that the shielding here is completely connected to the template on the back side from the breadboard. And here is the coil that I used. I hope it's visible. And that coil works very good on frequencies between 22 uh, MHz and 20 MHz. And here you see the waveform. 20 MHz, 22 MHz, but this oscillator is not critical at all. And you can also use other kinds of coils. The good property from this coil is that there's a ferrite a slug inside and you can tune that ferrite core to other frequencies. To another frequency band, etc. etc. So uh, I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, I also wanted to show, uh, only wanted to show the importance of shielding. And when all is done and soldered together, uh, a metal lid here from um, template covers the whole circuit. And this circuit uh, will be a superhead radio receiver from, say, 15 megahertz up to 20 megahertz or so. That's the aim from this circuit. So here we get the IF amplifier, here the high frequency stage, and the shielding is necessary to prevent coupling from this coil to the input coil that goes to the antenna. When they couple, the VFO and the antenna, uh, the whole thing will start to oscillate. And that's the reason why shielding is necessary.